As Up Close Crew, you know, we do what we need to do. We're the home of media personality, Janet Mbogwa Ndeshu. Yes, and we're about to have breakfast with her, spend the day with her. She has a new book doing great things for this country, and I'm super excited to be with her today. You have such a beautiful thank home. Thank you, my dear, and thank you for oh, coming. Beautiful Can you home. Say hi to, this is it, this is your camera. Okay. Finally, you see, Nimemleta kwa show. Thank you, man. Thank you for Everybody. inviting me to do this. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. I'm nervous. Oh, come on. <laughs> Very nervous. Hello, how long were you on TV for? For a while. For a while. I know. Cute. First of all, congratulations, <laughs> madam. Because <Yeah. laughs> she has her new book. Yes, my I first, do. I'm so happy for you. My first time. Yeah. Um, it's been a labor of love. Yes. It's been something I've been working on for right. a while. Right. And I'm, I'm really excited. It's one of those things that I'm super proud of. Yeah. I don't know that we give enough credit to ourselves sometimes yeah. when we've done something. Yeah. But this is something I thank God uh -huh. that he's just given me the grace to keep going yeah. and see it become a reality. And I know it's going to change mm. lives. I'm focusing on three things. I call them my three Fs. I say faith, family, and focus. Yeah. So faith, my faith, family, and focus. Yeah. So faith, faith is, I'm just trying to strengthen my faith in God. Family, I'm, I love family. I love my kids. I love... My parents, I love just spending time yeah, with my yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. They keep me very grounded. Right. And then Mali, Huru, Huru is in school? Huru is in school. He's almost four. Yeah. Um, Mali just turned one. Aww. So he's still... And you've been hiding, hiding him, but at least I've seen one picture of yes. two. <laughs> when he turned one, yeah. I was like, when he turns one, I'll show his face. Yeah. And then after that, I'll just see. And it's then like, the number three now. It's focus. So focus, focus is work. Yes. It's my projects. Mm -hmm. It's the things I'm passionate about doing. Mm -hmm. I wake up between 5.30 and 6. Mm -hmm. I have my me time. Yeah. Just like for 15, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. I you know, shower, have a bite, mm -hmm. meditate, just be quiet. And then at six, you'll hear, mommy. <laughs> that's my alarm. <laughs> that's my alarm. Then I'm like, Who's okay, that? that's Huru. Yeah. That's Huru. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, then the day starts. Yeah. It's like getting them ready, yeah. feeding, bathing, getting. Mm -hmm. Then once he's off to school, yeah. I kind of go about my work now. All right. Or I stay back to spend some time with Mali. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to rearrange yeah. my days just so that I can spend a fair bit of time with each of them. Okay. So I'm home usually by five. 5.35 p.m. PM. What? Yeah, Sometimes that is when some of peop other people's days... <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, I try to be home by that time All just right. so that I can have At the evening. Have them yeah. Oh. But you know, we have to start with some <clears throat> tea. <laughs> Karibu chai. Thank you so much. You have a seat today. Thank I'm going you. to serve hey. you. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> can you say that, you know, the industry, when you're, especially when you're very active on TV, was kind to you mm. because it's not to many of us there's that pressure that you're talking about high pressure yeah. first mm -hmm. of all kenya is a tough crowd yeah and in 2003 mm -hmm. i was at capital fm oh yes yes of um, course. Capital, yeah. which was so surreal because it's also something i really wanted to do yeah. so if i'm to go back i used to listen to rick d's yes um, to when i was in high school yeah then i used to listen to patricia mira yes. and then i used to listen to all these presenters and yeah. i'd sit there listening to them and admiring them yeah. and then i finished high school and I wanted to take a gap year. Mm -hmm. So my folks were like, that's all well and good, but you will earn your own money. I think I was like 18. I'm like, okay. Really? Yeah, they, uh -huh. they've they been quite tough in that sense. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I was in Mombasa because uh -huh. that's where I grew yeah, up. Yeah, that's where you grew up. And, I, and a friend of mine was like, hey, by the way, there's a new radio station mm -hmm. and they're looking for presenters. Why don't you go try? Yeah. And I said, let me try. So I went in. The screen test was kind of a joke. Yeah. He well, just told me to say, this was in Mauna, in Mombasa, in Pulse Mba FM. I don't think it exists anymore. Oh, there's a, uh, there's a, TV, a TV station in, in Mombasa? Yeah, I should even say radio. I don't know why I say radio. screen test. The audio test. The audio test. So he just said, okay, just say something into the microphone. That was my training. So Betty. what did you say? I was hi. just like, hi, my name is Jana. Da, da, da. Then he's like, okay, you can start tomorrow. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I have not trained. He's like, oh, you're fine. Everything <laughs> I've ever done has been baptism by fire, by the way. Yeah, you yeah, come yeah. to know. Uh -huh. So I said, okay, I need the job. So right. I told my folks I have a job. They're like, good, then you can take your gap year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I went. I did Pulse FM for a few months. Uh -huh. How much are they paying? I think it was, um, I think it was 10 or ten, maybe less. that's a lot of money to yeah. start off with. 10 or, or 7. Because well, of mean, those days. Those days. Yeah. yeah. But they didn't pay for like three months. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounded good. And then that? nothing was coming uh -huh. in. <laughs> And then they were the sister station to Capital mm -hmm, FM. Mm -hmm. So I started strategizing how I was going to go to Capital. Yeah. And so eventually one day I got somebody to record a show of yes. mine. Mm -hmm. When I was on air, I got somebody at home to hit record. Okay. So they recorded the whole show. Mm -hmm. I took the tape. I used to go to Nairobi on and off because mm -hmm. my family, like my cousins and all, my mom's family, my yes. dad's family. So when I went there mm -hmm. next, yes. I took the tape. Mm -hmm. I just walked into Capital. Just like that? Just like that. Walked to the reception and told the lady, hi, my name is Janet. Mm -hmm. And this is a tape and I'd like you to give it to the program's uh -huh. manager. Uh -huh. She's like, okay, but uh -huh. who are you? I'm like, who no, are no. you? I'm like, I don't, you don't know me. 
but work I want here. to work here. Mm -hmm. Every week I would call mm -hmm. her. Have you given it? At the time, Phil Matthews mm -hmm. was the program mm -hmm. manager. I'm like, have you given it to Phil? Then one day she just patched me through to him. Yeah. She didn't even warn me. Uh -huh. She said, just hold on. Then I just said, hello, Janet. I was like, uh, uh, excuse me? I'm like, that's <laughs> Couldn't talk. He's yeah. like, we've got your tape. Yeah. Just be patient. Mm -hmm. We're trying to work on a few things. Uh -huh. So I just decided to wait. And then one day I was in traffic in Nairobi going for shopping for my cousin's wedding. Mm -hmm. I get a phone call. I was like, hi, it's, it's Phil Matthews. Uh -huh. Are you here? Uh -huh. Are you in Nairobi? I said, yes. He's like, come. And long story short, yeah. that's how I became the mid-morning yeah. uh, magazine presenter yeah. capital mm -hmm. for about a year. Yeah. I did mid-morning. I did a bit of drive, a bit mm -hmm. of Saturday music The pay was sports. better. The pay was in... I was just like, what how is much happening? How much is it? It was, um, I think it was 50. Maybe what? 40 at that time? At that time. For yeah. how many hours? For three? For four, for hours, four hours. But then there was also a lot of things that, a lot of other things you yeah, would do. Yeah, yeah. And then there was other shows I started yeah, doing. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the year, I, I had my gap year and, to, and I, I, you know, that's what I promised. promised that was parents. the deal with my parents. Yes. And then I went to, to uni. What? Yes. And that is such a, <laughs> then now uni, then now. Then years later mm -hmm. was now, I came back and I was hoping to still go back to capital, mm -hmm. but they were doing a lot of um, restructuring. Right. And so one of the people that I think it was Eve was like, why don't you consider TV? And you know, I laughed, Betty. Yes. That was my first reaction. Yeah. And she asked me, why are you laughing? Yeah. And I said, I've. Nobody had ever told me I could do it. You TV. could actually do it, no one. but you had thought about it. Not really. I didn't think I was awkward. I was a very awkward child. Really? I was weird. I was scrawny. Mm -hmm. I, was, I didn't think I was TV ready. I had no CV, nothing. I just had a, that, a, recording, a recording, another from recording, Capital. which I did when I was in Malaysia, because okay. I was in uni in okay. Malaysia. Okay. So I went to Kitchen reception. I'm like, hi, hi, my name is Janet. And, and I'm here <laughs> to give you, just like that? Just like that. And I remember I told them, if it means you need somebody to serve tea, if that's what it will take to get my foot in, mm -hmm. I'm willing to serve tea. So they told me, just sit down, we'll call someone. Mm -hmm. So they called the late Gabriel. He was the mm -hmm. producer at the time. Mm -hmm. And they were like, there's this person here who's, who's just come with a CD. <laughs> she just, just talked to her. That and, is so cool. And I had no idea they were looking for a presenter for a travel show. No idea. Yeah. Didn't even know they had a travel mm -hmm. show. I think because I'd been away from the country. Yeah. And so he said, okay. So the, that day at 4 p.m., because mm -hmm. I dropped it in the morning, he called me. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hi, I saw your CD. It's actually not bad. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come tomorrow for a screen mm -hmm. test? And again, I was like, thank you. Oh it's my like, God! How is this happening? <laughs> okay, so I went. You're in. such. You're so. You. you that, that's just be brilliant. That's mm. just being blessed and lucky. And also, I think the timing. I know the right? timing. Yeah, also. no. So mm. I went in for the screen test, and he said, "You know, we were about to pick a host. We'd already decided who the host will be. Yeah. But now we're going to let the top three choices. Right. We're going to put all of you on again another screen test, mm -hmm. and then we'll present it to the board. So just start praying. Yeah, yeah. That's what he said. And then he called, and he said. You've got the job. We're traveling in three days. I was like, but I've not. Just like that. I'm like, where's the, screen? Where's the training? He's like, what training? We'll just go. And so uh -huh. that's what happened. And the next thing I knew, yeah. I was on the road. Yeah. I remember asking the cameraman, what do I do? What mm -hmm. do I say? And he just told me, just tell us where you are and what you see. So I said, we're here at the Lake Nakuru National Park. Behind us is the lake, which is becoming a little bit compromised. Um, and we just hope that Kenyans will look after the environment because we need the flamingos to attract tourists. Around us, we have a rhino and we have so much wildlife. I look forward to taking you on my journey on Lake Nakuru National Park. <laughs> You are so good. <laughs> it was something like Me, that. Me, I couldn't even talk for my first piece to see. I was just like, yeah. El Nianze. <laughs> <laughs> was that it? So I did that for six months. Mm -hmm. And then the contract, I think, mm -hmm. started to come to an end. And so then I found myself again needing to figure out what to do. Then one day, mm -hmm. I'm in Old Town shopping for lessos because mm -hmm. that's what I used to do. Yeah. I used to love going to Old Town. Mm -hmm. I was with my mom and her friend. Mm -hmm. And I get a call and it's, hi, this is Farida Karone. She said, where are you? I said, I'm in Mombasa. She's like, well, I'm going to need you to come to Nairobi, do a screen test, and start doing the news in a week. What? And I was there like, but, but, but. But, but she said, just come. And so long story <laughs> short, I went there. She just mm. told me, I don't know why you don't see it, but I do. Mm -hmm. So just do the screen test, and then we'll guide you. Yeah. And then I got thrown onto late night news, and then what? weekend, and then lunchtime. And yeah. I did that for about a year. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, I went to prime. To prime time. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is like the coveted the seat. <laughs> And then that's how I ended up <laughs> doing that. So I did that. I did prime time for a few months. Mm -hmm. And then there was an opening in South Africa for a job. Mm -hmm. And somebody mentioned it to me. And I took it casually mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I was like, let me try. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm 25. I don't really have 
a family. Yeah, yeah. So long story short, I was headhunted. I mm -hmm, applied. Mm -hmm. I got the job. And so I moved to Johannesburg mm -hmm. in 2009. And I worked there for two years mm -hmm. as a news anchor, reporter, producer. Yeah. So I came back to Kenya in 2011. Yeah. Didn't really have a plan, mm -hmm. but I had kept in touch with um, someone like Farida yes. for a while. And yeah. now she'd moved to Citizen. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hi. Hey. I'm in the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm in the What's neighborhood. Up? What's up? <laughs> so luckily, again, she was looking for a pairing with Hussein. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I ended up now doing a screen test with him. And eventually in November... We started a pairing as, Together. as Janet and Hussein I for know. Citizen. And that was like, well, that is one, I think, one of the best pairings we've seen. Thank you. I love and you guys, working with the, him. you guys had that chemistry. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did. We did that for what, five years? Was it six Imagine years? Imagine that. Five years? It was quite that a is while. Like, that's great commitment. Yeah. Do you remember how everybody was just like, Janet? Do you remember it that? It was so weird. But I just come from South Africa mm -hmm. where I had faced xenophobia, sex, really? sexism, racism, ageism. Like, mm -hmm. it was pretty tough. Really? There was parts of it that were good. Mm. But there are other parts where you realize, okay, really, I this is not my home. Mm -hmm. Or you try to get to a certain level, but mm -hmm. because of your race or your gender, it's very clear that you will not mm -hmm. go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So when I came back, yes, of course, I appreciated the admiration. But after everything I, I faced... Know admiration. You're just being humble. No, no, no. no. I was like, what? Wait, wait, wait. But I, I couldn't... <laughs> you know, it was difficult to let it get to my head because I knew where I'd come from. And I knew you that... You had gone through so much. I really had. Yeah. And so... And then again, like I said, I'm pretty close with my family. Yeah. We we'll never let me forget where I came yeah. from. Okay, so we've just had breakfast uh, with Janet and it was delicious. Uh, I can tell you that for sure. Although she's not the one who cooked it, but it's fine. <laughs> so now, Janet, I want us to talk about something that is very close to your heart. Mm. Your kids now, uh, yeah. Huru and Mali, you always, like you said, you know, you try to protect them as much as possible. Yeah. But I remember reading this article and you're saying that one of the reasons actually you quit TV because you wanted to also spend time. Yes. For, you know, with, at that time, it, I think it was Huru. It was just Huru. Right. Why is it so important to, to we have to hustle. Yeah. Even would be at home with Ivana or <laughs> take her to school and sit there with her. But You're like, girl, you gotta hustle. Yeah, you have to hustle. I don't know. I was going through a lot when I, when I took a step back. Yeah. I was going through burnout because mm -hmm. I'd done it non-stop for mm -hmm. 10 years, mm -hmm. non-stop. I didn't really have a relationship with Huru. Yes, I did the basics of bathing yeah. and feeding, but yeah. a lot of the time the, the nanny took yes, over. Yes, yes. And there's a time I remember I moved in to hug him and he did this. No way. Yeah, he did. He was more familiar with her because he was spending all the time with her. And I was like, oh, snap. For six months, I put my finances in order. Mm -hmm. I made sure I have projects that mm -hmm. even if I step out of TV, they're still yeah. sustaining me. And I made sure there were projects that could sustain me for two years. No way. Yeah, I really planned. What about Mr. Ndishu? How is it like, uh, yeah. you know, like, um, how long has it been? It's been, uh, I think it's been a few years. Yeah. Um, it's family and trying to balance family and work and expectations is really hard mm. and i always tell people when they're saying oh my gosh i can't wait to start a family i say two things yeah. take your time yeah. and make sure you're ready because you could be good at being in love mm. but you just you don't really need to be married you know i i love my family i love where i am mm. and i just know that it's not easy mm. and it's okay to say it's not easy yeah. Yeah. and i know what happens is the moment you say it's not easy i can predict oh. let me predict the blog posts <laughs> Let me just predict the vlog yeah. post, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will talk about it. Mm. Whenever you're going through uh, you know, like a personal issue and mm. then um, nobody like wants to understand. Because I, mm. I mean, you know, I've been there, got a t-shirt. But you mm. know, like nobody wants to really yeah. like understand. What's, and um, yeah, yeah, but it also takes the responsibility of people around you too. I like that it does. And people who actually care about you because yeah. there's a lot of people who don't and they want just to rose they want oh they like, just want the tea yeah yeah they want Imagine. the tea yeah, yeah. give them their dose of tea it just doesn't have to be the right tea <laughs> the right tea <laughs> um just be like everything's great yeah you know <laughs> everything's fine everything is so perfect yeah. but then yes i i'm very strict about my circle True. um it's small it's intimate it matters yeah. they're people who um, mean well for yeah. me yeah. and yeah, that's that's who I, I keep close to. But I just I just refuse to be quiet about the struggles yeah. that people go through, right. um, or you go through, that I go through. So I don't go into detail. Yes, yes. Just out of respect. Like, thank you so much for sharing all that with us. And uh, yeah. so now we'll be heading out to. Um, We're going to go to Kibera. Let me ask you, like, how first of all do you keep yourself looking like this? <laughs> I try and eat decently, but this, lately uh -huh. I've been doing really badly. Yeah, yeah. 
I love carbs. Eh? I love my chapels and my uh -huh. all of that. Uh -huh. And then I think I think Kuru and Mali keep me on my toes a fair bit. I'm yeah. always like on the move, on the and then I'm naturally always on the move. So what do you do for fun? Like you know, like I don't see the certain places where we would actually just. Uh... I do like chat. I like yeah. I like um, you know reading. I like I like um, excursions. Okay. I haven't done it in a while, but things like hikes and camping, yeah. actually like that, but I just haven't done it in a, in a while. while. Yeah, I think right. that's what I do, and, and, and outings, I guess. All right, so we're from Janet's home. The tea was delicious, like I mentioned, <laughs> uh, but I think we needed a bit more <laughs> to take us through the day, because now we are heading to Kibera. So before we get to Kibera, we decided to do a stop, to have a stop in Kiambu, mm -hmm. and we're here, you're coming to do what exactly? Yeah. You're this a woman of many, <laughs> she even wants sneakers by the way. I'm a sneaker fanatic. <laughs> this is part of what I do with Lifeboy, yeah. the Help a Child Reach 5 campaign. Yes. And so Naivas has obviously been a partner. Uh -huh. They help us not only sell the product, but uh -huh. also talk about the importance of hand washing with soap to save lives. Right. So what I do sometimes is I check in with the staff, how is it going? What other support do you need? Yes. I, is the messaging making sense uh -huh. to customers? Uh -huh. You know, once in a while, I even meet with the customers. So uh -huh. this is this is part of the work. Like I don't just show up at events. <laughs> I also try and post, check in. Just post pictures on. And All that's right. what I do. So that's what we'll go and do. All right, then let's go. Okay. Okay. Nice yeah. to meet yeah. you. Yeah. 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 So Karibuni, closer. Yeah. Can closer to the. <laughs> they literally no, look so. I decided to invade your store right. today with you with cameras. Every um, time you're done, you just need to mm -hmm. make your hands clean. And yeah. boy is a great one. Yeah. All right, so it's obviously a busy day with uh, Janet and Boga. We're still shooting up close on weekend with Betsy, and right now we're in Kibra mm -hmm. at uh, Carolina for Kibera. That's right. So we've been talking about this for a long time, almost the whole day. Yes. And finally, we're here. Yeah. So what is this place all about? It's an amazing place yeah. that I, I got to know um, the people who run it, who we'll meet just now, and they'll tell us a little bit more about their vision and their mission. Mm -hmm. But basically, they have a very robust adolescent mm -hmm. health uh, girls program, which is the reason I ended up collaborating. Right. So they've got a really good grasp of the community, they are trusted by the community, and so we came and added a menstrual hygiene program okay. within the programs that okay. they do. Okay. So, you know, the girls empowerment program is where we plugged in. Okay. It's a program that existed, we plugged in with this other mm -hmm. part of the program, which is menstrual hygiene. All right, great, so, let's go. How does it function? Uh, pretty much the same as the tampon, okay, uh, cloth. Uh, preferably cotton. So toxic shock syndrome can occur if you leave a sanitary product like a tampon for longer than eight hours, like she said. All right, so after the MHM lab with Janet and of course those amazing girls and the trainers, it's now time for us to talk about this milestone. Like, I wow. I know. You know, you posted this picture, I'm just like, wait a minute, am I, am I reading right? Yeah. You actually have done a book about my first time. This is how important it is to you. It is, Betty. It's so important. I think part of it is my own journey. Um, I had issues with my period. I started when I was very young, which you'll learn about in the book. Mm -hmm. I was inspired by the stories I heard. Mm -hmm. So the book brings together different sets of stories. Right. I didn't want it to be doom and gloom. That's yeah. why everybody looks amazing. But then everybody looks amazing. You should, okay, you should see the, the, the copy inside. Yeah. Show us. Even I've seen an imam. There's an imam. Imagine that. So that brings in the men. So I call it my first time to be like, first, what was your first time or first interaction like? And then let's draw from that story. What does it mean to you today? One of the people profiled is a former inmate. So oh. she talks about menstruation in prison. In and yeah. it is horrific. They don't have access to product. You're lucky if you're given one. Some people have to share a pad. No way. You share a pad. Just think about that. Think about having to share a used pad. That's the life that people go through because there's no access to product. And so part of this is supposed to be to influence policy change. I want to use this as a tool to say to the government, look, I know you're trying, but consider the fact that your policy has to be more inclusive. Yes, Even a dad who's scared to talk to his daughter should buy this book. Should buy this book. Because that. there's also letters there. Like there's a letter from a dad. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to talk, just read the letter. It will be available in stores from early November. Thank you. Thank you. Deserve a hug. Oh my gosh. This is so good and I'm so yeah. proud of it. I'm so happy Thank for you. you. Definitely will buy the book. Yes. There's a power within each and every one of us. A purpose, a passion, a drive. It's very hard sometimes to awaken to it. Yeah. But you, once you do, I think you can conquer a lot. This has been up close. Thanks, guys. Of course, on the weekend with Betsy with the one and only Janet Bogue. It's great to just have you here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say goodbye to. See you. Asante, Nisana. <laughs>